So tonight, part two on shame. So what we did in the very first night is understand that shame is a core belief about myself. It's a belief about my identity, and that belief is a negative belief that something's wrong with me, I'm not good enough, I don't feel lovable, I don't feel that I have any value just for being me, so I feel inferior, less than, is my normal default setting. And we developed what that meant, where it came from, and that for basically every person from complex trauma, they end up with shame. Because once they are neglected or abused or abandoned or their needs aren't consistently met, they conclude it's their fault. So I must not be good enough. That's why I'm being neglected and abused. There must be something wrong with me. That's why I'm being neglected and abused. So they develop this developing self-concept that is all negative. What I want to do tonight is go into the next part of where does the brain then go once it's reached this conclusion that I'm not good enough. And what I want you to understand up front is this is all happening at a subconscious level. This isn't you sitting down consciously saying, I think I'm no good, what am I going to do about it? This happens in the mind of a small child at a subconscious level. So the first thing that you have to understand is the conclusion that comes is not just that I'm not good enough, but there's a second conclusion, is, which is, if the two people that brought me into the world have concluded that I'm not good enough, therefore I can be neglected or abandoned or abused, that means that anybody that gets to know me is going to abandon me or abuse me or neglect me. So I can't have that happen. And so with shame develops a fear of abandonment. And fear becomes the main emotion that trumps everything else, but at a subconscious level, and it's, I can't stand the pain of being abandoned, but I'm afraid if people get to know me, they'll abandon me again, and that scares me to death. So what am I going to do to never be abandoned? So that's where the brain starts to go. So the first conclusion is, I must hide who I am. Because if they see the real me, they will abandon me. So priority number one in my life must be to hide the real me. But the second priority is I don't want to walk around feeling like I'm a nobody. I have to somehow compensate for that feeling so that I at least feel I have some value. And then from that comes two other priorities. Though I feel like I'm not lovable and though I feel I'm, I'm not valuable, I long to be loved. And I long to be respected or to have people treat me as if I have value. So here's what begins to happen. I want love and respect, but I must stay hidden. So how can I get love and respect without people getting to know the real me? And that becomes the challenge for the brain with a person with shame. And so what I want to do tonight is develop that for you so that you begin to see what the brain is trying to solve, what, this, what solutions it comes up with, and then I want to go into some of the ramifications of the solutions the brain comes up with. So the brain develops solutions that it thinks are going to fix the problem, but it's limbic brain stuff. It just makes things feel a little bit better, but it makes things worse in the long run. So here are some of the very early adaptations or solutions the brain proposes for the shame thing, how to get love and respect, but remain hidden. So number one, never be vulnerable. Never be authentic. Never let people see the parts of you that would make you weak. So don't let them see you cry, because then they might look down on you. Don't let them see you sad because then they might think less of you. So now you have to hide those weak emotions, not just your personality, but those emotions that can creep out. And then once they're out, people might think less of you. 
So that's the first solution. With that, you then put on masks. So they can't see the real me, so I need to present to them something that they will like or respect. I have to do an act or a role that they will say, wow, I like that person. I want to be with that person. And so you become a mask wearer. Some of you relate to being a chameleon. You wear a mask, a different mask for each person you meet. You know how to adjust your behavior to get this person to like you and how to make a different adjustment to get this person to like you. You're very good at wearing masks. We teach about the roles that children develop as they grow up. So you talk about the hero and the jester and the invisible child and the scapegoat child. I want you to think those, about those roles in terms of shame. Because one of the purposes of those roles is not just to help the family have less pain, it's to provide a solution to shame. So the hero child says, they can't see the real me, mom and dad, because they will reject me. They will neglect me. So I will be a hero. I will be super responsible. I will never cause problems. I will do extra chores. I will be cooperative with everything they want. I will never rebel. I will help out. Then mom and dad will love me and respect me. So the child is trying to get love and respect within the family while hiding what they think are defects. The second child is that invisible child that says, I don't want to be a burden to mom and dad. That's why they don't like me. That's why they abuse me and neglect me. So I will have zero needs. I will never ask for anything. I will never share with them my dreams or desires or wants because then I might be a burden. So I have to somehow fade into the wallpaper and have zero needs or des desires. Then maybe mom and dad will say, that's a good kid. And they will respect me and love me. So still trying to solve shame. Then the jester child or the comedian says, I will hide behind humor. People won't see the real me. Mom and dad will never see the sad parts of me, the parts of me that are painful and might be a burden to them. I'll make them laugh all the time. I'll make them so they're always wanting to be with me and have me around because I just make life fun and enjoyable and everybody's happy. Trying to solve their shame. So that is one way to look at the roles. Another thing that happens naturally in the brain is this. If I am perfect, people will love me and respect me. If I please everybody, people will love me and respect me. So I won't let them see the real me I will just be a perfectionist or a people pleaser, and then I'll get the love and the respect that I long for. Now, do you see the flaw in this? You get immediate love and respect, but what goes on in your head? You go, you're being a phony. If they knew the real you, they wouldn't be loving you and respect you. So this whole thing is getting you love and respect, and it feels good, but it doesn't satisfy because you know it's an act. And so that becomes the problems of this. Another solution the brain proposes is, I must lie about who I really am. I must lie about things that I do that I think might get me judged. I must keep secrets about struggles I have, failures I have, because I have to hide. And so to hide effectively, I have to become a good liar. And I have to become a good secret keeper. So again, you can see that might work in getting people to like you and respect you, but it sure isn't going to make a healthy relationship down the road if you keep lying and keeping secrets all the time. It's going to backfire sooner or later. Other people say, I will build walls around my heart. So some people isolate geographically. Who who wants to risk relationships with people when you got shame? 
because you, they're going to find you out eventually.